Good afternoon. So we left off, we had just discussed the Y profile on Victoria's mid and lower back. And so at this point, that profile belongs to an unknown person. Yes. Let's move to So, I'm sure you're aware in this case that Victoria's arms, we've talked about those, and organs were found in a plastic bag in an orange laundry basket in the living room. Um, there was a garbage bag at the very bottom of that basket, not the one containing her arms and organs, but another one at the bottom. I believe that is 1842A, and that is from your 1917 report and also some additional testing in your September 6, 2017 report. Yes. So that was labeled on scene as M6A and your number is 1842A and then you have some sub A and B? Correct. Okay. Let's talk about you're testing on 1842A, swabbing on the outside of the trash bag. 18... 1842-4A. Okay, you sorry about that. You side one on that. Yes. Just tell us, so you have a trash bag, tell us how you process this. Um, to my recollection, that trash bag um, was wet when it arrived, and the latent print analyst uh, dried that trash bag. Um, I think this one is a separate one. Is that a separate one? Um, so, so D42A, but there was latent. I'm sorry? There were latent, there was latent. Yes, um, so I did um, swab the outside of the trash bag on one side and then on the other side. Okay, and what did you find? So side one, this is 1842, that's 4A. Tell us what you uh, found on there. Uh, blood was indicated on item 1842-4A. Anything else? Um, yes. Um, human male DNA was identified on 1842-4A, <laughs> however, not in sufficient quantity for conventional DNA testing. What about the other side? So you just picked, you just said one, this is side one and then flip it over and that's side two? Correct. So 1842-4B uh, is side two. What findings did you have for that? Blood was indicated on item 1842-4B. And human male DNA was identified on item 1842-4B. However, not in sufficient quantity for conventional DNA testing. And then some additional testing was done on your uh, September 2017 yes. report. Yes, so on item 1842-4A, I moved forward with YSTR DNA testing of 1842-4A and 1842-4B. And what were the results? Partial male YSTR DNA mixtures were obtained from item 1842-4A and 1842-4B. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to the presence of unresolvable mixtures. So now let's talk about the orange laundry basket. Do you remember the large orange laundry basket? I do. And I believe this is going to be on your 81817, which is the uh, amendment from the May report, I think. Tell me if I have that right. And you said which one? What was the date? Uh, 8817. August 8, 2017. I think this is in the amendment from the typo. Yes. Okay. And Tell us what you 
let's see. Let's go to 1842.1. It looks like there was some staining. Swab. You did some swab? Yes, I did take a sample from that item um, of the red brown staining and the possible biological tissue um, that was inside the bottom of that basket. And tell us about the results from there. Blood was indicated on item 1842-1. reading through uh, the DNA profile obtained from item 1842-1 matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martins. Where did you go forward on the Y testing as well? Um, I believe I did, yes. The partial male Y STR, it was a partial male Y STR DNA mixture that was obtained from item 1842-1. However, no interpretation or comparisons could be made due to the presence of an unresolvable mixture. Let's talk about 1842-2, which I have labeled the swab of candles. Yes. On item 1842-2. No blood was detected on that item. A DNA mixture of at least two individuals was obtained from item 1842-2. The major DNA profile resolved from this mixture matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martins. Michelle Martins cannot be eliminated as a possible contributor to the DNA mixture from this item. Jessica Kelly and Fabian Gonzalez are eliminated as contributors to the DNA mixture. In your June 2nd of 2017 report, did you Yes, uh, Matthew Oding cannot be eliminated as a possible contributor to this DNA mixture from 1842-2. And then you went forward on Ys for this candle swab on your August 8th? Yes. Yes, I move forward with YSTR DNA testing on this item. A male YSTR DNA mixture was obtained from item 1842-2. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to the presence of an unresolvable mixture. Sticking with the items found sort of in and around that laundry basket, I'm going to show you page 93. Does that look like the orange basket? Yes, it does. And then we're seeing this bag in here, um, and I think this is the bag that you're referring to a second ago that was received with some issues. So let's talk about that. So Victoria's arms and other body parts were located in that bag. What was the issue when, with the bags when you got them, or when your lab received them? Um, I got a phone call from um, the latent print analyst um, to just go observe the evidence. Um, the bags, when he pulled them out of the packaging for his examination, were wet um, and had not been dried thoroughly between the layers. 
so he did want to just notify me and he let me know um, that he was drying the items so that they would be dry when they got to me. So tell us a little bit about that. Why, why do you dry wet items? Or do you want to keep them wet so you can get the good stuff? Or tell me how that works. Right. So from the time that an item is collected, if the item is not dried, um, the, we don't know how long it's going to be before somebody is able to examine that item. And so if that item is sitting in any sort of conditions that are less than ideal, which is really basically anything except room temperature and dried, um, it runs the risk of bacterial contamination, fungal um, contamination, um, degradation of the DNA, um, possible um, other uh, activity, possibly insect activity, um, and so the ideal situation in order to collect a DNA profile that is going to be able to have results that we can interpret would be to have that item that is wet initially dried thoroughly before submitting to the lab. So because this item remains wet, would you, is it fair to say that you would expect some uh, deterioration of what DNA Absolutely, could yes. have been on it? And despite that, did you do a number of rounds of number of rounds of testing on this? To see? I did. Let's talk about those. So you had two different rounds of testing on mm -hmm. these. So let's look at 4176A, which is on the April 20th report, and 4176B, also April 20th. First attempt to get evidence from these items. Yes, uh, 4176A uh, was the white trash bag, the swab of the white trash bag, um, and 4176B was the white trash bag and disposable wipes. Okay, so let's talk about 4176A, the results you got from that. Blood was indicated on item 4176A. Uh, human DNA was identified on item 4176A. However, it was not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. And what about 4176B? You said this bag had some disposable wipes. Yes. It? It? That's correct. And on item 4176B, blood was indicated on that item. Human DNA was identified on item 4176B, however, not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. Let's talk about the second try, which is in your June 2nd, 2017 report. Try it again with 4176A. Yes. And did you focus on a particular <coughs> portion of this? I'm going to show 93 again. And I know this isn't your photo, but there were some knots tied in the bag. Yes. Uh, when I laid that item out uh, flat on a clean surface, uh, I could see kind of folds or striations in the plastic where it might have been bunched up. Um, and so I focused the swabbing of that item on the top half of the bag <coughs> where the bag might have been knotted. Is that because that's likely where someone's hands would have been touching yes. the bag? Yes. And what did you find? On item 4176A, side one, There are a lot of numbers to go through on this one. Uh, 
The DNA profile obtained from item 4176A, side one, matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martins. Everyone else was eliminated from that DNA profile. And what about the other side? So again, you just flipped the bag and you were focusing where those, the plastic looked to have been. That's correct. Cut. Yes. What about the other side? 4176A, side two. Human male DNA was identified on item 4176A, side two. A DNA mixture of at least two individuals was obtained from item 4176A, side two. The major DNA profile resolved from this mixture matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martins. Did you have male DNA in insufficient quantities on both side one and side two? Let me go back and look at that. Human male DNA was identified on item 4176A, side one, however, not in sufficient quantity for further testing. On 4176A, side two, human male DNA was identified. And you put four of this live testing on side two? Yes. And what results did you get? A partial male YSTR DNA profile was obtained from item 4176A, Side two. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to an insufficient quantity of DNA in the sample. What about the, uh, let's use the 4176B, which is the bag that has the white, wet wipes in there. Right. Um, tell us about the second round of testing for, uh, for that second bag. And before we actually By the time it got to me? Yeah, this, the interior bag, was it very... I mean, it was dried. Bag. It was uh, very heavily coated with red-brown staining that was flaking off. Um, and so it, just because it was a plastic bag and there was uh, dried, like, powdery type staining, it was, uh, I think static was kind of working with it a little bit because it was, uh, the staining kind of went everywhere as I was swabbing. And did that appear to be, um, you had, you had a, a major profile for Victoria. Did you expect that that was probably her blood on there? I did, yes. So let's talk about the interior bag with the white side one, which is 4176B side one. <coughs> Human DNA was identified on item 4176B, side one. Human male DNA was identified on item 4176B, side one, however, not in sufficient quantity for further testing. And side two? And on side two, human DNA was identified on item 4176B, side two. Sorry, I'm just going oh, through these so that I can. Uh, no human male DNA was detected on item 4176B, side two. So was that the entirety of that result? 
yes, there was no human male uh, DNA detected there. Um, going forward with standard um, STR DNA testing, um, I'm sorry, yes, that was, that's the end of that testing. Okay. There was also a black sock found uh, with, with all of this other evidence we're discussing, um, and I believe that's 1842-3A. Is that on the same report? Let me tell you. It should be on your... July 19th, 2017 report? Yes. So we had 20, I'm sorry, 1842-3A, which I have listing as a, listed as a cutting of biological, possible biological tissue? That's correct. Tell us about that. Um, when I examined the sock, um, there was a piece of possible biological tissue on what would be the top of the foot area of the sock. I took a sample of that possible biological material for further testing. And what result did you get from that cutting? Blood was indicated on item 1842-3A. No human male DNA was detected on item 1842-3A. The DNA profile obtained from item 1842-3A matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martins. Moving to 1842-3B, what, um, what was that? That was a swabbing of the inner sole of the same sock. And again, why do you swab the inside of socks? To see who might have been wearing that item. What results did you get from that sock? On item 1842-3B, no blood was detected on item 1842-3B. A DNA mixture of at least two individuals was obtained from item 1842-3B. The major DNA profile resolved from this mixture matches the DNA profile from Fabian Gonzalez. And did you run statistics on that? I did. What were those statistics? One in 760 sextillion individuals. Did the tissue that you just described on the sock, was that consistent with the other tissue that we saw on the brown blanket and, the, and that we talked about? It was. Let's talk about the items that Victoria's body was wrapped in. Um, 4177B, which I believe is on your April 20th, 2017 report. Of that item. Item 4177A was a white trash bag 
Item 4177B were fitted bed sheet pieces. So let's start with the trap bed, 4177A. Tell us about the results on that. Or tell us what did you, what did you have on that? Um, I would need to look at my notes to remember that. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to have to pull them from back. Here. Yes, please. It is, yes. It's binder number one. <laughs> I'm sorry, can you tell me the item number one more time? There was uh, staining on the bag um, that I did test for the possible presence of blood. That was positive, and I removed a small area of that staining for further testing. So it was presumptively positive for blood, and we're talking about the garbage bag. Correct. Um, what other results did you get from that? Human male DNA was identified on item 4177A, however not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. What about 4177, and, and I'm sorry, did, and did, you, did you do PCR testing and have a result there as to that staining? Yes, I did. The DNA profile obtained from item 4177A matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martins. Let's move to 4177B, which is the sheet. Tell us about the results from that item. Uh, the fitted bed sheet pieces were item 4177B. Blood was indicated on that item. No semen was detected on item 4177B. Human male DNA was identified on item 4177B, however not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. The DNA profile obtained from item 4177B matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martin. Now you tested some clothing items taken from Jessica Kelly, the defendant, and Michelle Martin. Let's talk about some of those. So starting with some items taken from Jessica Kelly when she was in the hospital, I think we're going to be on your... April 20th and corrected July 20th. Oh no, that was a different date. I think April 20th. So let's talk about her tank top, which is 1855B. I'm not seeing that on this report. So it looks like the first report was the March 3rd, 2017. Yes, it's the May 24th, 2017 report. So let's talk about 1855 D. 
and you had some sub items. Yes. Um, D1, how did you have that listed? Uh, red brown staining from upper left side of shirt on the front. And D2? Uh, red brown staining from the hem area of the shirt. Front. Okay, so starting with the red brown stain from the upper left side of the shirt, what result did you get there? Blood was indicated on item 1855 D-1. The DNA profile obtained from item 1855 D-1 matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. Could you move forward on Y for that item? Seeing it here. <clears throat> For eighteen fifty five D dash one. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, it's there. <clears throat> A partial male YSCR DNA profile was obtained from item 1855 D-1. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to an insufficient quantity of DNA in the sample. Let's go to 1855 D-2 and start with a staining from the hem area of the shirt. Data for the first report. The first report was uh, March 3rd, and I think it was listed on the May 24th. I have my numbers aligned correctly. Yes. <coughs> Blood was indicated on item 1855 D 2. Human male DNA was identified on item 1855 D-2. The DNA profile obtained from item 1855 D-2 matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. And when I moved forward with male YSTR DNA testing, a partial male YSTR DNA profile was obtained from item 1855 D-2. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to an insufficient quantity of DNA in the sample. Let's move to the black jeans 1855F uh, that belongs to the Yes. Okay. And that is 1855F, and you have an F1 and an F2. So just let's start with F1. Tell us what, what that is described as and what you did. On item 1855F-1, the item was red-brown staining from the left leg of the jeans. Blood was indicated on item 1855F-1. Human male DNA was identified on item 1855 F-1, however not in sufficient quantity for conventional STR DNA testing. 
the DNA profile obtained from item 1855F-1 matches the detail, um, sorry, matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. Sorry, I'm trying to find the YSDR DNA. Yeah, that's more time. Thank you. That was too far. Partial male Y STR DNA profile was obtained from item 1855 F 1. Fabian Gonzalez, and any paternal male relative, cannot be eliminated as a possible source of the male, partial male Y STR DNA profile obtained from this item. And 1855 F 1, that was on the left leg of that pair of genes? Yes. Let's move to 1855 F 2, which is the right leg. Yes, it was red brown staining from the right leg of the gene. Blood was indicated on item 1855 F 2. Human male DNA was identified on item 1855 F 2, however, not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. A DNA mixture of at least two individuals was obtained from item 1855 F-2. The major DNA profile resolved from this item matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. And let's move to 1855 F-2. Yes, Victoria Martins cannot be eliminated as a possible contributor to this DNA mixture. In my opinion, she is included as a part of that DNA mixture. There were also some swabs of Jessica Kelly's hands taken at the hospital. And I believe on your August 8th amended, we have 1852S. On item 1852 S-1, blood was indicated. DNA mixture of at least two individuals was obtained from item 1852 S-1. The major DNA profile resolved from this mixture matches the DNA profile from Jessica Kelly. Did you eliminate anyone from that major profile? Yes, Fabian, Michelle, and Victoria were all eliminated as well as the other uh, DNA standard that I had. Everybody else. Yes, and no interpretation could be made regarding the minor DNA contributor to that mixture. And it was an insufficient profile? Yes. What about, um, was there a male YSTR profile? Did you go forward on the Y?
Yes, there was a partial male YSTR DNA profile obtained from item 1852 S-1. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to an insufficient quantity of DNA in the sample. Let's go on to swath of Ms. Kelly's hand. So there is, we just talked about 1852S-1. Yes. Let's talk about 2682A, which is another swab of her right hand. And I believe that should be on the March 3rd, 2017 report. swabs from Jessica Kelly. Are we referring to 2682B, the swabs from the left hand? There's a 2682A is a different right hand swab. So let's stick with and start with that. Okay. What results did you get from that swab? Uh, blood was indicated on item 2682A. However, no human blood was detected on this item. And what about 2682B, her left hand swab? On 2682B, blood was indicated on item 2682B. Human DNA was identified on item 2682B, however, not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. Let's talk about the hand swabs of the other people involved. Let's talk about Michelle Martin. She has a hand swab, I believe, on your March 3rd report and potentially the April 20th report, 29th. Right hand swab. On item 2922A, blood was indicated. Human male DNA was identified on item 2922A, however, not in sufficient quantity for conventional STR DNA testing. Yes, I did. I found a partial male Y STR DNA mixture obtained from item 2922A. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to the presence of unresolvable mixture. Let's talk about Michelle Martin's left hand, 2922B. Blood was indicated on item 2922B. Human male DNA was identified on item 2922B. 
However, not in sufficient quantity for conventional STR DNA testing. When I move forward with Y STR DNA testing, a partial male Y STR DNA mixture was obtained from item 2922B. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to the presence of an unresolvable mixture. Let's talk about the descendant hand now. That is on the joint. Is on your K1 marker? Yes. So we have the left hand at 2925A. Left hand swaps. So talk about those from the descendant. On item 2925A, blood was indicated. No DNA foreign to Fabian Gonzalez was obtained from item 2925A. What about his right hand, 2925B? Human DNA was identified on item 2925B, however, not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. Was there a positive presumption or a positive initial test for blood? A presumptive test, I should say, for blood? I'm sorry, yes. Uh, no blood was detected on item 2925B. The descendant also has some clothing items collected. So that would be the August date. Before. I see. I remember that. Yeah, I'll do it. So this is item 2684B, the shorts collected. Yes. And you did six different tests on these shorts, is that right? Um, at the report I'm looking at, I have um, two cuttings, 2684B1 and B2. And I think there was some later testing. Is that seen here in uh, January of 2018? Let me verify that. I think I do remember this, yes. Yes, that is correct. There are three um, I'm sorry, four cuttings on that one. So yes, six total. So we may be able to summarize these. Um, was there a presumptive positive for blood on this item, 2684B? Yes. And I'm looking at 2684B-1, tell us the description of B-1. Cutting from a drop type red-brown stain on back level panel of black, sorry, back left panel of shorts. And was this a mixture? On item 2684B-1, 
it was a DNA mixture of at least two individuals obtained from item 2684B-1. The major DNA profile resolved from the mixture matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martin's. And the minor profile? Jessica Kelly, Fabian Gonzalez, and Victoria Martins are eliminated as sources, sources of the major DNA profile obtained from these mixtures. No interpretation, I'm sorry, from this mixture, no interpretation can be ma made regarding the minor DNA contributor to the mixture due to an insufficient quantity of DNA in the sample. So we have Michelle Martins as a major and an insufficient minor? Correct. The next change, 2684B2, I have as cutting from surface type red brown stain on the back panel of shorts. Did that 2684B2 give you a very, very similar result to what we just heard? Yes, it did. Okay, so that's again Michelle Martins as a major and an uninterpretable minor? Yes. And then 2684B3, I listed as a cutting from top stain in vertical pattern from back left panel. So I'll stop there. Blood was indicated on item 2684B-3. The DNA profile obtained from item 2684B-3 matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. Partial male YSCR DNA profile was obtained from item 2684B-3. Fabian Gonzalez and any paternal male relative, barring mutation, cannot be eliminated as a possible source of the partial male YSCR DNA profile obtained from this item. All of the other male DNA standards I had were eliminated as sources of this partial male profile. Sorry, you said 1829? Yes, 1829? Yes. Is that the last stop? Yes. And I'm going to show you states 204, or I'm sorry, 205, and then states 204. Those items appear to be the items that you tested uh, to my recollection, yes. So talking about this black sock, item 1829, what was the result? What did you test? You have some sub broken out into the 1B, and, or I'm sorry, B1 and B2? Uh, 1A and 1B. Um, so on item 1829-1A, it was a swab of the entire outer surface of the black sock. On item 
one, which was the black sock, blood was indicated. No human DNA was detected on item 1829-1A. No human male DNA was detected on item 1829-1A. Again, blood was indicated on 1829-1. I move forward with testing that for a DNA profile and I obtained a DNA mixture of at least two individuals from item 1829-1B. The major DNA profile result from this mixture matches the DNA profile from Fabian Gonzalez. And the minor profile? Jessica Kelly, M Michelle Martins, and Victoria Martins were all eliminated as contributors to the DNA mixture obtained from this item. Is that for the major profile? That's um, for the mixture. They're eliminated from the mixture. A mixture of male YSTR DNA of at least two individuals was obtained from item 1829-1B. Fabian Gonzalez and any paternal male relative cannot be eliminated as a possible source of the major male YSTR DNA profile resolved from this item. A minor unknown male DNA profile was resolved from this DNA mixture. Which report are we looking at? I'm looking at a few, so let me. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I think mostly the 71917 report. So I can read them out. So B1. Yes. Just to kind of consolidate the results. Yes, it was positive for the possible presence of blood. And the source of B1 is Michelle Martins? Yes. For B2? Also Michelle Martins. Also presumptive for blood? Yes. B3? <coughs> yes, also Michelle Martins and presumptive positive for blood. Michelle Martins and presumptively positive for blood. B5. 
same result. Seven. And that may be on your four twenty report. I think so. Presumptively positive for blood. Uh, same. And I'm sorry, back up to D7, that was also in the tolerances. Presumptively positive for blood. Also, let's see, sorry. Also, Michelle Martins. Presumptively positive for blood. A DNA mixture of at least two individuals was obtained from item 2678B-10. From uh, the major DNA profile resolved from this mixture matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. No interpretation or comparisons can be made regarding the minor DNA contributor to the mixture. Everyone else that I had a standard for was eliminated as a source of that major profile. E11. <coughs> Presumptively positive for men. E12. Presumptively positive for blood on B, uh, 2678 B-18. A DNA mixture of at least two individuals was obtained from item 2678 B-18. The major profile resolved from the mixture matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. No interpretation could be made regarding the minor contributor to the mixture due to an insufficient quantity of DNA in the sample. And all of the DNA standards I had were eliminated uh, right. from the major. E20. Presumptively positive for blood. The DNA profile obtained from item 2678B-20 matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. Everyone else has been eliminated from that DNA profile. And that was which one? B? Um, 2678B-20. Okay, so then B-20.
presumptively positive for blood. And also uh, this profile matched the profile from Michelle Martin's. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other uh, swabs in the apartments, whether these B dash whatever they are. Uh, we heard some testimony from Detective Pisano that Milcastol Violet, or we seem to call LCB, was used to enhance some of the blood in the apartments. Um, so that is B23 through B29. So let's take a look at B23 through B29 and summarize um, what you've got. I believe B23 is on 420, as well as B27 and B28 and B29. And then 24, 25, and 26 are on July 19th. So we can start with 420, and we'll come back to these middle ones. Here. Okay. So B23, um, just while you get there, well, I'll let you go first, and then talk about it. We'll take a break after this, ladies and gentlemen, and stretch our legs a little bit, okay? After this group dance. Sorry, I have to find where I went again. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be the blood that was found. Uh, blood was indicated on item 2678B-19, is 23. 23? Uh, on B-23, yes. Okay, and what result did you get from B-23? No human male DNA was detected on item 2678B-23. And no human DNA was detected on item 2678B-23. Okay, let's go to B-27, let's do B on that same report. On which report? On the same one, April 20th. Same one. Yes. So B-27. No blood was detected on item 2678B-27. B-27 is No blood was detected on 2678B-28. Mm -hmm. What about B-29? Blood was indicated on item 2678B-29. What else about B-29 make a result? No human male DNA was detected on item 2678B-29. And no human DNA was detected on item 2678B-29. Okay, so moving to the last three I talked about, which are on your July 19th report, B-24, 25, and 26. No blood was detected on item 2678B-24. B-25. Blood was indicated on 2678B-25. What are the results for 2678B-25. No human DNA was detected on item 
2678B-25. Blood was indicated on item 2678B-26. No human DNA was detected on item 2678B-26.
heard from Mr. Pisano were LCDs at very generally familiar with LCDs? Very generally. I really don't know too much about it. So my question to you is that on some of these samples, we have blood indicated, no human male DNA, no human DNA, or on some, no blood detected. So how, how did we get a positive presumptive result at the scene with the LCD um, and then not anything really um, from your actual testing? Right. So uh, LCD testing, to my knowledge, is a uh, presumptive tool for um, looking for uh, if blood might be present. Um, and in my experience um, in the field, when something like luminol is used, for example, um, or Blue Star, um, which is sort of a similar sort of screening. Um, any staining that they're looking for happens to be in very low quantities already. And so um, I know when it comes to luminol um, that uh, testing reagent is a liquid and so it can dilute what is already in very low amounts already. Again, I don't know the details of LCD, um, but uh, just based off of what I know as it being a similar sort of tool, it wouldn't surprise me if that were the case, that it might have diluted something that was just already not there in very high quantities. What if, are these the type of results you might expect if an area had been cleaned or scrubbed? That would be reasonable too. Uh, Conclude, yeah. Going back just a little bit, let's go back to 4175.13, which is on your supplemental from uh, May 24th. Okay. That was Victoria's uh, body swab from OMI from her neck. Yes. And the result was human male DNA, and when you went forward on PCR, you had no DNA formed of Victoria. How do you reconcile? seeing human male DNA and then nothing foreign to Victoria. That doesn't seem to make sense. Well, human male DNA was identified on item 4175-13. However, however, it was not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. Um, so that indicates to me that there's a very, very low amount of male DNA present. So when you went forward on the actual testing, all you saw was Victoria? Correct. Let's move back to the inside of the apartment. We're going to look at 2678B-12, which I think is contained in your July 19, 2017 report. And then I think why we're in September of 2017. Can you tell us um, how 2678B-12 um, was labeled for you or how you in how it was listed in your Twenty six seventy eight B dash twelve. Yes. Uh, it is listed as swabs of staining from northeast corner of kitchen table. A kitchen table. Sorry. Kitchen table. And what results did you get from that? Blood was indicated on item twenty six seventy eight B dash twelve. Human male DNA was identified on item twenty six seventy eight B dash twelve. However, not in sufficient quantity for conventional STR DNA testing. The DNA profile from item 2678B-12 matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martin's. And a DNA mixture uh, a male, a mixture of male YSTR DNA of at least two individuals was obtained from item 2678B-12, Fabian Gonzalez and any paternal male relative, barring mutation, cannot be eliminated as a possible source of the major male YSTR DNA profile resolved from this item. 
Matthew Oding is eliminated as a source of the major male YSTR DNA mixture obtained from this item. No interpretation or comparisons can be made regarding the minor contributor to this DNA, to this YSTR DNA mixture due to an insufficient quantity of DNA in the sample. All other standards that I had were also eliminated. So in that Y mixture, we have the defendant, and then we have a minor profile that indicates another male is present, but there's no way to tell who it is. is that Correct. Right? Let's look at B13, which is 2678B13, which is on your uh, April 20th of 2017 report. And if you'll just tell us how this one is labeled also. You said 2678B-13? Swabs of staining from South Door Jam of Northwest Bedroom. What result did you get there? Blood was indicated on item 2678B-13. DNA profile obtained from item 2678B-13 matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. A partial male YSTR DNA profile was obtained from item 2678B-13. Fabian Gonzalez and any paternal male relative cannot be eliminated as possible sources of the partial male YSTR DNA profile obtained from this item. Let's move to B17, 2678B17, and tell us how you have that listed. Swabs of staining from door of Northwest Bedroom. And what is the result from that swab? Blood was indicated on item 2678B-17. Human male DNA was identified on item 2678B-17. The DNA profile obtained from item 2678 B-17 matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins. And a partial male YSTR DNA profile was obtained from item 2678 B-17. Fabian Gonzalez and any paternal male relative cannot be eliminated as possible sources of the partial male YSTR DNA profile obtained from this item. There were some books that were part of this case. Do you recall those? I do. And let's look at 1853A, which I believe is on your um, April 20th, 2017 report. Yes. And can you read the description of that item for us, this book was that? On 1853A, the book is an anchor for the soul book from that No blood was detected on item 1853A. And on 1853B, what is the description of that? From Faith to Faith, a Daily Guide to Victory book. Blood was indicated on item 1853B. Human DNA was identified on item 1853B, however not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing.
12 sustaining from closet door in northwest bedroom. Three results for B14. Blood was indicated on that item. Human male DNA was identified on item 2678B-14, however not in sufficient quantity for further DNA testing. The DNA profile obtained from item 2678B-14 matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martin. Swabs of staining from kitchen floor by sink. What was the result there? Blood was indicated on that item. Human male DNA was identified on item 2678B-6. The DNA profile obtained from item 2678B-6 matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martin. A partial male YSTR DNA profile was obtained from item 2678B-6. However, no interpretation or comparisons can be made due to an insufficient quantity of DNA in the sample. And let's talk about B30, so 2678B-30. Yes. I'm going to show you, read your description of that one too. Swabs from water in kitchen sink. I'm going to say stage 45. No blood was detected on item 2678B-30. No human male DNA was detected on item 2678B-30. to me was yellowish colored. Um, I don't know whether or not the swab had been dipped in the liquid that is reddish tinged or if it was used to collect some of the um, lighter pieces that are floating in that water. Um, just based on my test result, it would indicate to me the latter. Um, just based off of the color, off of the other tests that I had performed on other material that looked similar, um, as well as the phenonegative result. Would, just going back generally to 
containers and things like that. Mm -hmm. And soap and water, hot water, um, maybe even some cleaning agents have been in this um, sink. Could that affect the results that you're seeing from samples taken from the sink? It could affect that, yes. And as far as the biological material, that second sample, what was the result there? And we're talking about? 2678B30, isotogenase soda dry ice. Yes, okay. You're, you're talking about the retest of that item? Yes. Okay. Twenty six seventy eight B dash thirty was retested, um, so it was the swabs from the water in the kitchen sink. Um, I did not do serology on that because it had been done prior um, in the first round of testing. Um, I did move forward with quantification. Um, no human male DNA was detected on item twenty six seventy eight B dash thirty. And the DNA profile obtained from item 2678B-30 matches the DNA profile from Victoria Martins. Ms. Archuleta, I'm going to show you what's in marker identification of stage 330, 322, I apologize. Are you familiar with that chart? Yes. And have you reviewed the, uh, that chart? Yes, I have. And is that chart an accurate reflection of not all, but some of the test results we've gone over here today? Yes. Your Honor, I would move for admission of states 322 into evidence. No further objection. 322 will be admitted. May I publish? You may. So, Ms. Archuleta, we have talked about a lot of stuff today. Yes. What percentage do you think we've hit of all the tests that you did? Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, even half? Maybe 25, 30 percent. And that's a ballpark figure. <laughs> Absolutely understood. Yeah. So looking at this chart, states 322, um, you indicated that this is sort of a, a summary of some of the things you've gone over. Is that Correct. fair? Yes. And so on this chart, we have the blanket, the blood stain from the closet in Victoria's room, the carpeting in Victoria's room with fibers from the carpeting, the face to face book, hand wipes container. The swab of the inside, the swab of the outside, that knife that we looked at, the blood stain from the kitchen floor, B6, um, that was Victoria, the biological material retest that we just talked about, B30, that's also Victoria, the washing machine contents, this uh, hand towel that we looked at, and that's on here because there were two samples taken, so we have A1. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the blue and green bath towel. So there's two of the blue and green bath towel and one of the white towel in this photo. <laughs> then we have the Tinkerbell comforter, the green hand towel, the black sack from the laundry basket in the living room, um, two of the samples there, the uh, possible material from the laundry basket, the garbage bag that we talked about, the blood stain on the northwest door frame, uh, the garbage bag that was around Victoria's body, the sheet or blanket around her body, and then we have a quick little summary of some of the autopsy findings and also her lower back where we did have one comparable profile that was a Y. Um, all of these things, this is an accurate chart as to what we've talked about today? Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Time your honor, the state will pass the witness.
Archuleta. Hello. Um, other than Victoria's brother, Matthew, to your knowledge, were other male uh, juveniles uh, collected their, their DNA profiles? Do you know if the, the others were all adults, males? I won't know the age of the individuals, typically. Okay. Now, your test detected male DNA with insufficient material for further testing on, on many, many items in this case. Would you agree with that? Yes, that's correct. And now, many of these low-level male DNA could, could be Matthew himself, couldn't it? It could be any number of different individuals, but I can't make any comparisons to them because they're insufficient. Right. And it's not really surprising in a household where there are males, not only uh, her brother, but Fabian was living there, perhaps biological father came by. We're, we're not really too surprised to find, uh, to find other uh, male DNA at a low level uh, in a household with males. I would agree with that. Okay. And so when, when we see, well, low-level male, that doesn't mean uh, her killer is touching all of these different places or objects in the, in the house. It means I detected a low amount of male DNA. And that's all, right? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Now, uh, two points. Uh, I guess there's two items that do point to Fabian Gonzalez in this, uh, in the, in the summary, I thought I saw it here somewhere, but the summary that she prepared. And, and by the way, who did prepare that, that uh, summary that's called, I've got my copy here, and here's the original. It's Exhibit 322. Did you prepare this? I did not. Okay. And the two items that I, picked up, and correct me if I'm wrong, is a black sock that was in the living room in an orange basket and a, a, a blood stain on the door frame in the northwest or Matthew's bedroom. I believe that was correct, yes. Okay. Let's go over the black sock first. Now, you you tested both the inside and the outside of that black sock, right? I tested the um, possible biological material on the outside of the sock and the inside of the sock, yes. Okay. And the inside of the sock showed that there was a mixture of, of two or more uh, contributors. I believe that is correct, yes. All right. Now, if we assume that two people wore the sock at one time or another, can you tell if Fabian was the first or the last person to wear that sock? I have no way of knowing who was first or second to wear it. All right. When he wore the sock, can you say, uh, was it the same day or a week earlier? How long does DNA stay on a sock or any other object? Well, DNA can last for a very, very long time on an object given proper storage conditions. However, um, I have no way of knowing when DNA was deposited on an item. Okay. One sort of end point would be if you throw it in the wash and wash it, it's probably going to lose its DNA, won't it? I would say that the D DNA would decrease in the quantity that is there, yes. Okay. And there was a fair amount of quantity, enough uh, at least for you to actually identify him to, uh, to a high degree. Yes. And the other level of, of uh, comparison is when you say, well, somebody can't be eliminated. Correct. And we have some of that in this case as well, don't we? That is true. Now, isn't that sort of like, depending on how much uh, information you have from the profile, but it's a little bit like saying, well, uh, the person has a last name that has the letter A in it, 
and there may be quite a few people with the letter A, but once you start getting all of the letters of their last name, you're almost there to where you can identify the person. Is that a fair analogy to what uh, I can't eliminate somebody means? It's not an, al an analogy that I've ever used. Um, I think I, try, I see what you're trying to say um, in the fact that the more letters you have, the closer you get to the name. Um, I would say that a, a partial profile or a profile that has less information, um, if more information was found on an item of evidence, then yes, I might be able to make more of a comparison if there were more DNA on that item, but I work with the sample that was collected. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can't make them a better sample Correct. than they are. Now, I, I'm not sure, it's my understanding the biological material was found on top of the foot, not on the bottom as if it had been stepped on something. That's correct. And if someone were handling biological material through the plastic bag uh, that had body parts into an orange basket and then threw her purse on top and the sock was in between the, the uh, purse and the bag, it's at least possible that that sock was contaminated on the top of the foot with biological material after Fabian wore the sock. Is that true? I would say that's possible. Okay. Now, even in your laboratory setting where you have strict protocols, uh, we had a camp contamination in this case, didn't we, of some sort? There was one, yes. And that's, I mean, I, I noticed the, the young man uh, that was uh, doing his work at uh, at OMI, he wore gloves and, and, and uh, mask and, and uh, uh, scrubs and, and the whole material. And the purpose of that is to try to avoid contaminating one object with another or maybe biological material from here gets on here and, and, you, are, and you start interpreting it wrong because it was contaminated. That is correct. Okay, so it certainly is possible that that sock was contaminated after Fabian wore it. Well, I don't think contamination is the proper word for that. Um, I think um, what I think that you're trying to get at is that it's possible that the body tissue could have been deposited on the sock after it had been placed in the basket. Yes, I think that is reasonable. That basket had a lot of blood staining and a lot of uh, pieces of possible biological tissue uh, within it, and so it wouldn't surprise me that um, some of that could have gotten on other items within the basket. Thank you. Now, no other item in all of the, the mountain of evidence that you had That's to, a lot. And, and I'm sure the jury appreciates that, but that's the only item that has both Victoria and Fabian's DNA in, in, on one object. Yes. Now, there, were, there was a black sock and white socks that, uh, that were collected downstairs uh, where, where uh, Fabian and Michelle uh, had somebody call 911. Are you familiar with that I think your number is called 1829-1A is the black sock, and I don't remember the number of the white one, but. Yeah, I am familiar with those items, yes. Okay, so for those items, which uh, Fabian was wearing, uh, they had negative findings for, uh, there certainly was was nothing from, uh, as I understand it, there was no human DNA on the black sock, but there was blood on one B. Was that part of the black sock or was that the inside outside thing? Um, do you know which report that's on? I, 
I'm not sure what 1829-1A would be, but uh, it's, it had uh, major, it might, might have been left and right, suck, but the major was Fabian, and Jessica, Michelle, and Victoria were eliminated. Yes, this is 1829-1 um, is the black sock and 1829-2 and dash three are both white socks. Okay. Can you repeat your question? All right, please? very good. My question is, as I understand it, I think it's 1B, which might be the inside of the outside of the black sock, I'm not sure, but there was a DNA mixture, the major was Fabian, and, and you could eliminate Jessica, Michelle, and Victoria. I think that's what you said. 1829-1B did have a major DNA profile that matched Fabian Gonzalez. Okay. And uh, Jessica Kelly, Michelle Martins, and Victoria Martins were all eliminated as contributors to that DNA mixture. Okay. And that was item 1B, which was the inside sole area of the sock, of the black sock. All right. So that, like the other black sock, you had an inside and an outside. Yes. And, and you eliminated, uh, among other people, Victoria, and and Fabian is is a, is a match really to that major yes. contribution. Mm -hmm. Now there also happened to be a minor male, but but we don't know who that is. Let me go back to this item so I can look at it. It was a DNA mixture, um, so there were uh, smaller components, but yes, uh, everyone was eliminated from that DNA profile from all the DNA standards that I received. Okay, so it's an un unknown male on his, in, in his sock. There is another person in that DNA mixture, yes. Okay, and it's a, uh, it's a male, we're pretty sure, aren't we? Um, it is a DNA mixture of at least two individuals. Uh, the major was Fabian. Um, I. So were you running your uh, your your YSTR, or was that the the uh, more traditional? On 1829-1B. Yeah. I have to find that if you That's can give fine. me just a minute. I know I'm um, jumping around. That's okay. Yes, sir, you are correct. Okay. <coughs> A little, uh, uh, I did, my notes weren't very good. You found presumptive for blood on a whole string of things B1, B2, B3, and B, I believe, stands for blood in, uh, by, the, uh, by the Albuquerque detectives. That's why they put a B there? Or? I don't know whether okay. or not that's the reason why. I just know that it was labeled that way. And You've got B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B7, B8, 9, B21, and there were probably some others. And those were all uh, basically Michelle's blood, weren't they? Uh, yes, there were a large number of those items that were Michelle. So do the labels tell us, are these blood spots that they're getting in the kitchen and, and the hallway and out the door, or what are all of these? Uh, these are the numbers that uh, the law enforcement agency um, had on their items, and so I use their item number to move forward with my testing. Okay, and they didn't uh, make our summary here. No. Uh, so we don't have like their location or anything. That's correct. Do your labels give us a little hint as to what all that, where all that blood was found? Uh, <laughs> Yes, and that is listed um, with my items that were examined. Um, and on that first page or multiple pages of the report is the item description 
as best as the agency has given to us. Now, can you summarize that in a nutshell? Where is all of this blood of Michelle, if, if you know? Oh, I would have to go back through all of those items. Um, it might be worth it so that we know, um, is she bleeding in the kitchen or the living room or, or where? Do you know which report this is on? I don't. I, I know you two are going through all of those bees. There are quite a few on the July 19th report. And it looks like uh, there are various locations. Why don't you read them off to us if it's not too hard? Uh, uh, do some say living room? Um, B1, 2678 B1 says from concrete outside front door. Okay. Um, and again, I'm just reading through these. Let me. Make sure that the ones I'm reading back be, be, are the ones that belong to Michelle. Five are all her blood. And then you skip it. Correct. Um, B2 is from floor of entryway. B3 is from floor between front entryway and kitchen. Um, I'm sorry, that was B3. Uh, B4 is from kitchen floor by washer dryer. B5 is kitchen floor by refrigerator. Okay, skip six. Uh, yes. Uh, six was on a different report. The next one I have is nine. And that is from cabinets above refrigerator. Eleven, which is from furnace door. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 12 is from northeast corner of kitchen table. And 21 is from south wall of living room on west side of MBR door, which is, I'm assuming, master bedroom. Master bedroom. Okay. Very good. Um, now, the only other item, we've talked about the black sock. The other item connected to Fabian, uh, not to the others, well, I guess it is connected to Michelle, is B13. And uh, that was the blood stain on the northwest bedroom. Sorry, I'm gonna have to locate that again. Yeah, well, I'm looking at it. It looks like there's, there's references to Victoria's room and then references to northwest bedroom, so it sounds like that's Matthew's bed, but I'm not sure you would know that. I don't know that information. I only know the quote that they, that's or the they information that they listed on the bedroom. item. Um, I'm sorry, I did find um, 2678 B-13. That is on the April 20th, 2017 report. Excellent. Now, um, can you tell, it looks like we have uh, Fabian's, uh, or at least you can't rule him out, and you've got Michelle's blood all close to a light switch. Can you tell if Fabian left his DNA before or after Michelle's blood was left at that location? No, I cannot tell that. Now, one of the things in the summary I don't see is, wasn't Fabian's blood found on Jessica's pants? Yes. Okay. And that would, that's, that might be significant. And was that a, uh, a, a match or just couldn't rule him out?
sorry, it's right here on the May 24th, 2017 report. You're speaking about the, um, the 18, blood, uh, 1855F? The Fabians that was found on Jessica's campus. On yeah. item 1855F, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, Sorry, I'm just making sure I'm correct here. That's fine. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Those 1855 F1 and F2 were both uh, Michelle Martins as the major on 1855 F2. And on F1, the profile matched Michelle Martins. Okay, so the blood on her uh, pants belonged to Michelle, not to Fabian. Correct. Um, all right, so now you found uh, sperm cells in, that, in Michelle's panties, the ones that she was wearing, is that correct? 2925, uh, I'm sorry, what item? I don't have a number. Objection, you're on a road. was found on Victoria's body. You would agree with that? Yes. And none of the swabs taken from Fabian's body after his arrest contain uh, Victoria's DNA. That's correct. No other article of clothing belonging to Fabian in the master bedroom or elsewhere in the apartment had any of Victoria's DNA on it. That is Objection, Your Did you test any other clothes that belonged to the defendant or, or were labeled as his? Uh, clothing other than what is listed on the May 24th, 2017 report? Right, because on that one we had the socks from downstairs, the shorts, and the underwear, I believe. Um, on, I'm sorry.
I'm sorry, the closing items. I think we're on a different report. August 8th report, um, there was a set of clothing, uh, 2684 is the item number, clothing from Fabian. And what did you find on, on his clothes? Um, on items, let's see, item 2684 A. No human, let's see, I'm sorry. No human DNA was detected on item 2684A. Okay. On item 2684B, uh, I took two cuttings from that item. Uh, I labeled them as 2684B-1 and B-2. Right, and that's the one where you actually had a total of six cuttings. Yes, because that item, I did look at it a second time on a different report. Right. Um, on and and let's, let's summarize that one first before we move on. Okay. Um, Michelle Martins uh, was the major contributor, um, and uh, Fabian couldn't be eliminated as the minor contributor on his own clothes. He was eliminated as the source of the major profile, right. and there was no interpretation regarding the minor contributor due to an insufficient quantity. Okay, and that that so was B2. On B3, was he able to be eliminated? Um, this one is on a different report. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to find that report unless you have the... I don't know which... That would be on the January 29th, 2018 report. 2684B, you are referring to? Yeah. And 2684B 3, I think is what you asked about, right. correct? B 3, I thought he was not eliminated as a minor contributor on his own clothes. The DNA profile obtained from item 2684B-3 matches, matches the DNA profile from Michelle Martins, Jessica Kelly, Fabian Gonzalez, Victoria Martins, and many other DNA, <laughs> DNA uh, profiles uh, were all eliminated as being the source of that DNA profile. Okay. So it, to go back to my original question, trying to throw it all together, mm -hmm. Not, there's nothing of Victoria on his clothes. That's correct. Okay. Now, given what was done um, to Victoria's body, would you agree it's important to see what, if any, DNA is on her body as opposed to clothes and walls and everything else? I would agree. Now, YSTR is a little bit of a biased test because it only looks for male DNA, not female DNA, right? Well, I wouldn't say it's a biased test. The, the reason for doing the global filer testing to begin with, the STR testing that looks at all of the DNA, looks for both male and female. The YSTR DNA testing is a tool that is used just to see that minor male component that is overwhelmed by any female DNA that is present. And it's, it's a helpful tool, especially when males commit a crime on a female because the female's DNA is going to uh, flood your tests. And this YSTR, it doesn't look at female, it just looks at male. 
The YSTR DNA test only looks at the male information um, and um, it is helpful um, to see uh, that male component when there is an overwhelming amount of female DNA. It's not helpful as a tool if it's a female committing a crime on a female because you're eliminating not only the victim but also the perpetrator. Well, females don't have a Y chromosome and so we cannot do the YSTR DNA test for females. Okay. Now yesterday we heard of all the places on the body where dry and wet swabs were taken. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, were you ever asked, and it's not a trick question, but were you ever asked to uh, uh, analyze a pair of pink pajamas? Not to my recollection. They were not dropped off at the lab. Okay. Now, on 4175-13, Victoria's neck, Yes. I believe you said you didn't find foreign DNA, and that means DNA other than uh, Victoria herself. That is correct. As I understand it, there were minute amounts of DNA on several places, but only uh, a couple of places were there enough male DNA for the purposes of comparison. That's correct. Now, what I thought we would do is, can you pull up 4175-11 and we can write down what the alleles, uh, uh, you know, at each loci, what the numbers are? Uh, you're asking me to pull up my electropherograms? The ferrogram, unless you have a summary or something. I have the electropherograms with me. Let's, let's do it that way. I may have a copy as well. Yes, I just need to find it. <laughs> okay, understood. I thought I had a copy up here, but we'll go with yours. Okay. All right, let's um, write down the, the number, and, and so we can orient the jury a, a little. These loci on the left, what are they? The loci on the left are the pieces of DNA that we are looking at on the male chromosome. And this is what you focus on in every DNA test because uh, you're looking for uh, a match between two if, if they have all the same numbers then it's a match. Could you rephrase your question? The, these different locations. Yes. Uh, you have a, a, an electropherogram where you get a spike yes. and, and you get a number like a 13 Correct. or a 20 mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you compare that spike and that number with a spike and a number uh, with, uh, that's an unknown sample. We don't know who, who left their DNA on, on the second sample. Well, my, my job is to look at the item of evidence and the DNA profile on the item of evidence and then compare it to any known standards that I have. Well, let's do that here where we're going to mm -hmm. compare the, the two uh, major uh, DNA with, with Gonzalez. And before we get to Fabian's DNA, how do you get his numbers? How do you, uh, we call it a known profile, but how do you know that it's his profile? Well, you're talking about the DNA standard that was collected from standard. him? standard, there you go. Yes, the law enforcement agency collects the DNA standard and um, that is done with a proper chain of custody. Um, so it is known that that sample was collected from that particular individual. 
And so we would call this uh, dash 11 and dash 14, they're kind of unknown profiles because we don't know who left those. Let's go ahead and identify that exhibit. Um, so yeah. we're asking defendants M. M as in Michael? Yes. Thank I think you. That's what we're asking. I'll put a sticker later. But Well, anyway, let's go through the, the first, which is 41. 75-11, and you're looking at your electropherogram. I'll write down the number that, that goes with each location. What is the number for 576? DYS, I guess, DYS 576. Is it 15? We don't have a 576 on here. This was done with Hawaii filer testing and in between um, some of the tests that I performed at the lab, we moved over to a different, it, it's the same kit, but it is a, an updated kit with more information. Okay. Should we put an NR there, or what should we do with it? Uh, yeah, I would just leave that blank. Okay, so we'll put, we'll just leave it blank. How about 3891? 13. 448. That is dropped out, so there's no information there. 38911. That's also dropped out. How about number 19? It is a 14, but is, it is below threshold information. So should we put an X, uh, a line X? Uh, you can put it in parentheses so that we know that it's below okay. threshold. Okay, and what's... Governor, I would, I would object. I would ask that it be struck out if it's below threshold, meaning it's not comparable. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and start that one out. Is there an objection to that, Mr. No, that's right, fine. Let's go ahead and start that one out. How about 391? 11. 481. You said 481, correct? 481. Um, that one is also with the newer kit, I believe. 549. And I'm going in order, I think, of your electric program, aren't I? Yes, but with the switch over from the. I see older kit to the newer kit, they changed up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> that one's also on the newer kit, sorry. <clears throat> How about 533? Also on the newer kit. 438? That's also below threshold, so we can strike that. 437. Same with the last. 570. Also on the near kit. Yes, 24. 439. I think that's a scratch. Uh, that's a 12. Okay. 392. Dropped out. 643. <coughs> on the newer kit. <coughs> 393. 13. 458. 16. Now this next one should normally, if you had a full profile, have two numbers. Right, um, and that dropped out. Okay, neither one of them. 
Correct. How about 456? I believe that is the first one up there that is a 15. The header's cut off a little bit, though. Well, there just wasn't enough DNA in that sample to get a full profile. Okay. <coughs> the other of your strongest sample is dash 14. Can we do the same thing with that? Certainly. Do you have a 576? No. How about 3891? Yes, uh, that is a 13, also with some below threshold information there. Okay, how about 448? That's dropped out. 38911? Uh, 29. It's uh, 3892, <laughs> sorry. Instead of 1, 1. Yes. Huh? And that would be true for both of them. Or like I, I. Uh, oh, I, I <laughs> yeah. stands for two, I guess. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's why I was wondering. I, it took me a little bit to find it because I was. <laughs> How about number 19? Uh, 19, <laughs> dropped out. 391. 11. 481. Uh, newer kit. 549. Also newer kit. Now when you say newer kit, mm -hmm. we've been, does that mean you did another test and you got the number or? No, when I tested this, I tested this in y filer So at the time, that's what this was tested in. So the newer kit, you have locations for an updated kit that this was not run in. Okay, so we may have more, uh, more data if, uh, if you re-ran, or, or what are you saying on a newer kit? Um, yes, it is a newer kit. Um, if it had been run in y Pilot Plus, it's possible there could have been more information, but I don't know that for certain. Okay, understood. All right, tell me 533. Three. <clears throat> uh, that's also on the newer kit. 438. Dropped out. 437. Uh, 15 below threshold, so we can mark through that. 570. Uh, newer kit. 635. 23. 390. Dropped out. 439. Uh, 12 that is below threshold, so that would be marked out. 392. Dropped out. 643. Uh, that is also a newer kit. 393. 13. 458. 16. And then at 385. 14. 456. Uh, 15. And then the YGATA. Dropped out. All right, let's go to the uh, known sample of the defendant. 
if both of them dropped out, we won't get that number. So the first one we'll look at is 3891. I'm going to have to find that profile. Understood. It's just a few pages. His, we, we have numbers basically for all of them, uh, but we don't need to, to make this comparison if there's nothing to compare to. There is a profile to compare to. I'm just trying to find it. Okay. All right. So the first one I want to fill in is 3891. Is that a 14? It is. Sorry, they're printed very dark on my paper, so it's a little hard to Mine see them. Uh, it's number 13. 385? Yes, a 13 and a 14. And two more, 456. Four. Sorry, I have the answer for that one, but I think um, the one that we um, labeled as a 15, um, 458, I, that's a different Give me just a minute. Uh, 458 should be an 18. Okay. Four. Is this one an 18? Yeah, that should be an 18 right there. Okay. And then 456, the one you just asked about, should be a 15. And the last one should be a 12. Okay. Now it looks like there's a few that he does match up with. 456 matches up with. And then 393, I think that's it. The probability is you would have one or two alleles in common with. Yeah, that's not uncommon. Are you able to eliminate uh, Fabian from the, the two samples uh, that we the only two that we can compare with, there might be a third, but I think they all came to the same conclusion. There were four total, they were all consistent. Um, so the same um, information was coming up in most locations. 
And Fabian Gonzalez is eliminated from all of those. Thank you. Your witness, uh, we move amendment to evidence. Any objections? Uh, no further objections. All right, I'll be admitted. <coughs> You were asked about the black stock 1842-3P. Yes. Came from the orange laundry basket. That's correct. Did you find anyone else's DNA in that stock? Uh, I'm going to have to look back at that. Can you refresh my memory about the, the report date? July 19th. Thank you. The secondary question that you'll probably only answer the same time is, was that even a mixture? Okay. Um, oh. And you said it was on the July 19th? Yes. yes. was a DNA mixture. The major DNA profile matched Fabian Gonzalez. And then moving to 1829-1P, which was from the May 22nd report, which I think might be the August 8th updated. That's correct. You also tested the inner soul of that sock that was found in the trash can of the neighbor's house. Yes. And you were also able to match that sock That is correct. And there was a question about the biological material that was found on the first box we talked about, 1842 3P, and some question about you don't know how that piece of what we now know as Victoria's biological material got onto that stock. Is that right? That's correct. I don't know. So, in addition to the hypothetical that it could have come from inside the basket, it could also come from someone cutting up her body and it getting deposited during that. Correct. That's also possible. Let's talk about the blood on the door frame. Uh, one, there's blood on a few door frames, I think, but let me look to Mr. Aarons asked about the northwest bedroom and thought maybe that was Matthew's room. Um, do you know if that's Matthew's room or Victoria's room? No. Okay. It just says northwest bedroom. Yes. So we'll have to rely on other witnesses to orient us to which bedroom was the northwest. Is that right? That's correct. And looking at the results that we got from the uh, 2678B13, which is on your April 20th report. We talked about this earlier, that this was blood indicated and Michelle is the contributor, and then you ran Y's and Fabian could not be eliminated, the defendant. Does that sound correct? Yes. And then there's another blood stain on the exterior side of the bedroom door to the northwest bedroom, which is 2678B-17, also in the 420 report, that also has um, blood indicated, 
with a PCR whole DNA test that shows Michelle is the source. Then you went forward with Wyeth, and again, uh, the defendant is um, could not be eliminated from that Wyeth hair profile as well. Correct? That's correct. You were asked if the only item with Victoria and the defendant on it um, was the sock with the biological material. Yes. And you're aware that there was another lab involved in this case? Uh, yes, ma'am. And are you aware of all their results? Um, I've seen the report, but I don't do um, some of their same testing, so a lot of it doesn't make sense to me. So when you answered yes to that, that's just based on your report. So Correct. Let's do that. Mr. Aarons went through some of the swabs that we tried to summarize quickly that were all Michelle. The one um, on the list. Let's be accurate. The one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eighteen, twenty, and twenty-one. And we went through those earlier, and those were all um, essentially uh, Michelle as either the source or the major contributor. Yes. We skipped over B6. Mr. Aaron skipped over B6. Do you know where B6 was from? Uh, 2678B-6? Yes, 420 report. Swabs of staining from kitchen floor by sink. And that came back to Victoria? Uh, I believe so. Let me just verify. Yes. Just so that we're clear, when we're talking about YSTR, there was an implication that, or I think there was a direct question that was it a bias test or sort of unfair or skewed. But let's just walk through your process again. So when you do the testing, what's the first test that you do? Uh, the global filer testing for autosomal DNA, which is, it covers uh, looking at DNA from any individual that might be on an item. Men and women? Men and women. And then only when you see, well, well, I will just ask you, when do you go forward on why? When do you make that decision? Um, often when there is enough male DNA that we are unable to see that clearly in a global phyla profile, we will move forward with YSTR DNA testing to then look at that male component since it seems to be overwhelmed by any female DNA present. So we talked a little bit about that overwhelming potential mm -hmm. for yes. um, in DNA. In a situation where there would be a lot of female blood, would you expect that to overwhelm the male DNA? That wouldn't surprise me if that happened, yes. And is that a situation you'd go forward with Y if you saw a quantity there? Yes. Let's talk about 4175-13, which is the next swab from the Office of the Medical Examiner. It's a wet swab, I believe that's on your supplemental amended 52417 report. Yes. Now there was a question that said there was no DNA foreign to Victoria on cross. Yes. And that result was from the autosomal testing, the first test. Is that right? Oh, let me verify that. That is correct. But there's also, on that same next swab, you have in your result that human male DNA was identified but insufficient for testing. Yes. And we talked a little bit about that on direct, about how you can have nothing foreign to Victoria, but then also see a male. Can you explain that again, just so we're very clear about what that finding means? Certainly. So at the quantification step, um, our test is designed to look at both human and male DNA. Oftentimes, when there is a lot of female DNA, there's a very small amount of male DNA. So we might be able to detect that DNA as being there. However, I'm not always going to see a male DNA profile when I move forward to global filer te testing. 
So not only on this result, but I think there's several others. I believe one is her left thigh, and I believe another one was her fingernails, and two are missing others. Where you have in your result no DNA foreign to Victoria, that doesn't mean that that seeing that male DNA means that there wasn't a male, right? It just means that there wasn't enough for you to produce the result to show you the profile that you could compare. Is that fair? Right. It just means that what I did identify was in very, very small quantities and I couldn't move forward with testing. Let's move to defendant M. This was a, you testified on direct that you eliminated Fabian from the defendant from 4175.11 and 4175.14, correct? Yes. So this is just like a longer way of saying that. That's correct. Now on, we talked about some of these, I believe DYS19. We started talking about a number, and then you said it's below threshold. Yes. Well, let me ask you this. You had a number. Yes. So how come you can't just compare it? Our laboratory protocol has an established threshold, um, the analytical threshold in which if the allelic number is below that uh, threshold um, for how high that peak is, then I cannot re use that information because that information is in the area that could be confused for the baseline noise. And so that is not reliable information. And so we leave that information out so that we're not falsely including or excluding an individual. You also talked briefly, so let me back up. So there's a danger if you were to compare, to be, even though because it's, it's coming up on your chart, right? You have a little box, you have the number, it looks really cool. That's correct. Me. But there's a danger if you compare that to a known sample, you could include someone or exclude someone incorrectly. Is that That's correct, thing? yes. You talked a little bit about there being a newer kit that came online in the middle of this case. Mm -hmm. Does that in any way negate the results that we've heard about you testify to today? No. Would that work it have eliminated the defendant more than he's already eliminated? Uh, no, he's already eliminated. May I have a moment now, please? We have no further questions, ma'am. All right, you may give the next speech. You may. All right. You may step down. Thank you. Thank you.